Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to a continuation of this tutorial where we create a wine barrel. So, so far we've created the color map and this time we are going to go over the bump map. So a bump map is a grayscale image that gives the 3D model the appearance that it has roughness information and also a rise and fall. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can make this barrel look a lot more realistic by learning how to create a bump map. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do before we open any file in Maya is go to file set project. Um, as you can see, I have a ton of projects, but the one I'm looking for is barrel. Let's go ahead and set it file open. Let's open that up. So far we have a physical sky in the back model is ready to go. So this time what we need to do is hop back into Photoshop and really control our textures, especially our bump map. So right now, when we take a look at our render, and as you can see, it's very polished. It almost looks like it's covered in plastic. We spent a lot of effort trying to make it look dirty, but boy, that specularity makes it look like it's something that I could, you know, give to a child so they can play with and they won't get tetanus. So we really want to make sure that we can really add that, that grimy, uh, texture and also the bump, the bump map. So there's a lot of things we need to control. So our UVs are done. We have the color map. Let's go ahead and hop into Photoshop. Okay. So here's our barrel. When we talk about bump map, what they're really talking about is if something is white, it rises and anything that's dark is sink. So we can use this to create what's called a bump map. So usually what people do is go over here to our nodes and create what's called a hue and saturation layer. This hue and saturation, we can go ahead and grab this and desaturate it. So that basically means that everything's in black and white, which is perfect, but we can't just leave it like this because if we take a look at what's happening, um, if something's black, like this fine wine is black, it's actually going to sink inward and anything of this white area is going to rise. We gotta really control our bump map to make sure that we have exactly what we need. Now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and go to file, save as, because this after all is my color and I'm going to call this BMP. This is my bump map. Now that I have my bump map, I can just go ahead and take a look at what it looks like in Maya so that you guys can see what not to do. Then we'll, then I'll show you how to control your bump map. All right, let's go to barrel shader. We're going to scroll down and under geometry, you have these really cool things, but what we're looking for is called bump mapping. We're going to click on this little checker and let's go to file. We're going to go over here and you'll notice that something interesting happened. Instead of going to our typical file node, it, instead it takes us to what's called a bump 2D node. This bump 2D node telling Maya, hey, you're not looking at this like a texture map. You're actually looking at this so that it rises and falls. So you'll notice that we have a depth of one. Don't worry about that just yet. We're going to go to bump value over here and we're going to click on this connection. That means that it's got a connection and it goes to our file. We're going to go to our image name, click on a little folder. And just like we did before, since this is a working file, we're going to go to images. And then here is my BMP open. So you'll notice right away in the preview, it's looking really rough. It's looking cool, but it's looking really rough. So let's see what that looks like in Arnold. So right away, you can see that the specularity has been, you can see the little sparkles. That's the specularity trying to figure out where the heck it's supposed to go. Because basically what we've told it is, Hey, this is actually very shiny, but we just added this bump map that is really making things very noisy. And you can see that it's having a hard time. It's already rendered in 10 seconds. And you can see that it's like having a Arnold is having a hard time trying to figure out, okay, it's supposed to be glossy, but if you've added this bump map. That's very high contrast. What do you guys want me to do? So I'm going to stop this really fast and just kind of take a look at some area, some plot problematic areas, especially at the top. Now, when we're looking at something, you'll notice that this fine wine, because it was dark in the bump value, you can see that it's starting to sink in. And that's not really what happened here. We're not really taking a giant stamp and then forcing it into the object. This is supposed to be like a stain. And same thing with the stains underneath our metal. You can tell that, that any area that has that stain uh, from corrosion and time, it's starting to actually weather into the wood. And that's not accurate. What we need to do is tell it, hey, this is just a stain. 
It's not impacting the rise and fall of anything. It is just a stain. So we're going to have to make some changes in our bump map. So let's take a look at Photoshop. So right now I'm going to take a look at my logo and I'm just going to go ahead and remove it. And the reason why I'm removing it is, is because it's just supposed to be a paint. Paint doesn't change the texture of the object. It just paints over it. Unless it's a really thick paint. If it's something very, very thick, um, then yes, you would have a bump map for it. And you would want it to be, let's say, white. So for example, I'm going to double click on this, go to color overlay and change this into white. This would actually rise. So let's take a look just for fun. Let's take a look. I'm going to save. It's going to tell me that it can't because um, for whatever reason, bump maps need to have multiple versions. So I'm going to call this bump map two. It's not a big deal. Um, it's something that for whatever reason, it's a little bit more complicated than a regular color map. So we have to reload it as a different texture map. So I'm going to go over here, click on this, go to my file and just type in the number two. You can always reconnect it as well. But let's go ahead and render. And now you notice that it's actually rising. So instead of sinking into the wood, it's now rising. Now, again, this is too much. Uh, I'm not really looking for it to rise. I just want it to be a stain. But this is an example of how bump maps are so powerful. All right, so I'm going to hide the logo. I'm also going to hide the drip because I don't need it. And let's talk about how this is going to work. So the lines are supposed to sink right? Which are going to do great. And the metal is supposed to rise because it's supposed to be above the wood. Um, and then the other ones are supposed to be a little bit more neutral. So how can we gauge? Well, the interesting thing is that we can actually use this color, this empty color that we use as a border. This is 50% gray. 50% gray basically means flat, neutral. So anything brighter will rise and anything darker will sink. So we can use this 50% gray to help neutralize something that if we want it to be a little flatter, but if we want something a little higher or lower, we actually will need to brighten and darken based on this. So what I'm going to do is take my metal and I'm going to double click on it. And I'm going to do what's called a color overlay. Now this is over the top and too bright. So I'm definitely going to reduce my opacity. But the purpose for it is to try to get some of that color to not only flatten out a little bit, but also to brighten up the, the texture. So I'm going to go ahead and increase it to maybe 40%. I don't need it to be this bumpy, right? That's a little too much. Um, I need it to be a little bit flat. So I'm going to just kind of make it a little brighter and let's see what that looks like. I'm going to click OK. Let's see if it saves. If it doesn't save, it's not a big deal. Yep, there you go. I believe I have to go to up to three and then I can go back to bump, regular bump. It's an interesting little hiccup that Maya has. I'm not really sure why, but um, it's not a big deal. It's an easy fix. So again, bump mapping, click on this little guy. I'm going to change this to the value of three. And let's see what we get. So it's definitely looking a lot nicer. It's starting to look more like something that has texture on it. It still looks a little bit like stone and cement, which I really don't want. So I'm going to have to calm it down a little bit more, but I'm starting to like the way it looks. Uh, I am a big fan of the way the texture is falling on the wood. I think it's a little high, but I'm going to kind of calm it down a little bit more. So going back to Photoshop, there's a couple of ways we can do this. One, we can take our this object right here and just go to levels. So levels, just like anything else, we can kind of help. We, we can increase the contrast by bringing these colors together, which is a little too much. But we can reduce the contrast by using these this little guy right here. So we can actually go ahead and start bringing these levels closer together. Now the lines, I don't want it to be impacted by the lines. The lines, I want them to be pitch black. So I'm going to drag the lines to the top. Then what I'm going to do is make a selection. So I'm going to do, let me open this up, the metal. Let's see if I can, is I'm going to take my lines here. I'm going to click on this. This is the metal stripes. This is what's giving us the metal stripes. And then you can see that it's got the clipping mask. I'm going to click on the metal stripes. So hold down control, click on this little icon, and it's going to make a selection. Then I'm going to go to my lines and I'm going to create a selection mask. Now it's doing the exact opposite of what we want, 
What we want is the selection to ignore the metal stripes and be and in the wood, you're going to see it. So I'm going to select this tiny little icon, this mask, and then I'm going to do a control I and that inverts it. So that is exactly the effect that I want. I want the lines to be on the wood and I want the metal strips to not have the lines, which is ideal. And the purpose for this is because what I want to do is double click on this object, go to color overlay, and I'm going to choose black. And I'm going to make sure my opacity is basically all, all the way to 100%. So this is going to help everything make sure that it's nice and black. All right, going back to, so I have my lines, I've got my levels that's uh, helping me with the contrast. If I want to, I can go ahead and reduce it even more so that it's not so crazy. So let's go to save as, and this time I'm just gonna call it regular bump. Replace it, say yes, click okay. Let's go back into Maya, and this time I'm going to delete that three and place this one. All right, so it's looking a lot nicer. The lines are nice and strong. You can see that it's uh, getting some really nice information. The wood's not too crazy and it's really working well. So perfect. All right, so since we feel like the bump map is ready to go, let's go ahead and file save as. And I am gonna go to barrel, source images, and then change this into a TIFF. You can go ahead and turn off layers here as well. So there's two, several areas where you can save. Again, make sure this is none. It discards the layers. Click OK. And we have a bump map. Now, if you're not interested with keep keeping your file clean, you can always delete anything that you're not using. So for example, I can delete the logo. I can delete the drip and just kind of keep it nice and clean. The last thing I wanted to show you for bump map is the bump depth. This is a really fun little tool because it, it controls the map as well. So not only can you control the bump depth with color, you can also use this little slider. So if I change this to zero, for example, you're gonna notice that the bump has disappeared. So and then you can see the glossiness and how shiny this is. So this is helpful, but um, because if you only want a little bit of that bump, you can always increase it to 0.1 and then it will actually give you a little bit of that bump map. So it's a great way to also control your bump. Now, the fun thing about this one is that if I change this to negative one, for example, it will actually reverse the color, almost invert it. So now you'll notice that the metal strips almost look like they're going inside the barrel and the lines are kind of like basically almost sticking out. So it's a, it kind of breaks things a little bit when you change the, change the values to negative, but it's also interesting to know. All right, so now that we have our map, what I wanted to do is I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna to go to my source images and connect the barrel bump. You know what's really amazing about bump maps is that even though it looks like it's rising and falling in the front view, you'll notice that it doesn't actually impact the silhouette of the object. So this is actually an illusion. That's what's amazing about bump mapping is that it's an illusion. It doesn't actually exist. It doesn't change the geometry. It looks like it's changing the geometry, but if you look at the silhouette, it does not change the geometry. Now, if you wanted to, I would encourage you to model this if you want to get that silhouette. But for this model, I think it's gonna work just fine. The purpose is for the bump map is to show you that things can rise and fall even though it's not actually doing anything to the model itself. It's pretty neat. All right, now that we've completed the bump map, but how do we get those metal strips to actually look like metal? Well, that's gonna be next when we talk about roughness and metallic texture. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you spending the time with me. Hopefully you found this useful and you learned a lot. Let me know if you have any questions by leaving a comment below. And of course, please take a look at academicphoenixplus.com where you can find free downloads, free eBooks, and so much more. It would be wonderful if you could press that little thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. And if you think this is helpful, someone might be able to learn something from this, then please share my videos. Again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time when we talk about metal.